Today, we are gonna be going over Brewbilt Ice Master Glycol Chillers. Why you want one and how to choose which one's right for you. Before we get started, make sure you like this video, subscribe to our channel, and then also comment below. Tell us about glycol, any questions you have, what you might be doing to control your fermentation temperatures right now. So let's talk about glycol chillers in general. I consider them the gold standard of fermentation control. Yeah, if you go to any commercial brewery in America, they're using glycol chillers to chill their, uh, or, or control their temperature of fermentations, cold crashing, etc. We as home brewers are used to putting our fermenter in something else. And in this scenario, we have a bath. And this one here, it's eight gallons. And you're gonna mix water and glycol together. And then there's coils, refrigeration coils, literally in that bath. Yeah, uh, what we're doing, why we're putting the glycol in there, it allows, you, as, as everybody knows, water freezes at 32 degrees Fahrenheit, zero Celsius. But having that glycol solution, and it's a food grade solution, it's just like antifreeze, it, allow, it stops it from freezing. So you can go below the freezing point. So you typically set them about 28 degrees Fahrenheit. So then you get to put a controller, these have them built in, some don't, and you decide what you want your fermentation temperature at. And you literally are going to pump glycol solution from the reservoir to whatever your heat exchanger is, through your jacket, through your coil, whatever it's gonna be, and back into here. And you can get like pinpoint accuracy when doing it this way. Yeah, think of it just like, you you know, if you are using a refrigerator right now, that temp controller tells it, turn the refrigerator on. All this does is tell it, turn the pump on. So it starts to pump that liquid, exchange heat, and, and cool your, uh, and then when, you know, if it hits the temp you're set at, it stops pumping. It's pretty pretty basic concept, but it kind of seems like, wow, big glycol chiller. So it's really easy to wrap your head around. We're gonna dig deeper into all of it now. Yeah, the fun is it's fast. When you have a super cool liquid, we're talking like negative degrees Celsius and Fahrenheit, to where when you're doing that and you're, let's say, trying to hold 68 or 70, that's no problem at all. But then you wanna bring it down to cold crashing, it's even easier uh, than most other forms of chilling to get you there. Yeah, you're gonna get there quicker, more efficiently, um, and, and get to that you know, 38, 34 degrees uh, Fahrenheit to co truly cold crash your beer. So we're gonna start off with the Ice Master Max 4 because it basically represents all three models. We have an Ice Master Max 2, which is just its little brother. We had it up earlier, it's about this tall, very convenient, but they share the basic functionality. And the only difference between them really is their size and the fact of two controllers versus this has four controllers. And it's as simple as just setting what temperature you want your fermentation to be at hooking up your glycol lines to that and having your temp sensor run up to them to know what temp you're at. Yeah, so each each of your tanks, your fermenters will have you know a, a thermal well in there. Based on what you set that temp at, you could have one cold crashing, one controlling fermentation temperature. So the big difference, like Chris said, is how many tanks you want to cool. Uh, this one's four, the other one's two. The max 100 is a max of four, but you can kind of build out as you go. So that's what's kind of cool about that one. Well, let's talk about the max 100 because it looks very much identical to this minus the four controllers and it even has the bulkheads. So you can hook up your own internals. So it's a little less expensive, but you're going to need a pump or pumps and a temp controller. So we always kind of say like undersize or oversize your glycol system because you'll never regret that. Mm -hmm. If you try to build it perfectly for your environment and anything goes wrong, it's really hard for it to make up. It will eventually, it just takes time. Like for instance, when I was specking out the brewery that, that I opened, we, we, I did, you know, I got four tanks I'm starting with. I said, I wanna cold crash all four of them in a hundred degree ambient. So, it, you know, I needed a five ton chiller to do that. Um, so ambient, how you're cooling your tanks, those all come into to the calculation. So your mileage may vary depending on where you're at and where the tanks are sitting, that kind of stuff. If I had to choose and I was going to ferment at most a seven or 14 or maybe two 14s, but my ambient wasn't 
in the desert, I would probably choose the Max 2. Hands down, you just did a 14 and a 7. Yeah, and problem, um, was able to get them down to 38, uh, you know, cold crashing. So it really, you know, right now we're at like 70 degrees in the Bay Area. So uh, Oh, and that's no problem at all. But I think they can go up to 80 and 90. You had last year, right? Didn't you do 98 or something? But that was one at a time. Yeah. And so this summer, we hope to do some more experiments for you to give you an idea of where we're going with it and how high you can handle and how much volume you can handle because I believe they can go way bigger than we're testing them right now. But if you're gonna go 27 gallon fermenters, I'd probably do two or three on here. Maybe four, depending on your environment. But if you wanna cold crash all four, it's just kind of an unknown right now. Will that do it successfully at 90 degrees? We're gonna to have to test that out for you. So the last thing to talk about is comparing the reservoir size of the three models. And that's the, the biggest differential besides how many controllers it has. The Max 2 has a four gallon reservoir, four, four and a half, something around there. Whereas the Max 4 and the Ice Master 100 both have an eight gallon reservoir. And that reservoir is important. Um, that is what's gonna allow you that delta T, that differential to be able to do a fast heat exchange on these bigger fermenters or more fermenters. So we're gonna show you kind of how to set them up, fill them, all of that in a future episode. So click here to see that. So there we have it. Glycol chillers are the ultimate way. It's the commercial grade. It's what pro brewers are using. It's the best way to completely control your fermentation temperature quickly, accurately, easily. Seems daunting, but it's super easy. We went over all the pieces. Let us know if you have any questions. Yay! <laughs>